it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in today's video we are making a dainty drawstring bag. So we have here a bag that I've designed a little while ago and I really love the intricacy of all the stitches. It's a drawstring bag so it has a round base, it fits all your necessities and it's easy to close the bag and it's easy to open the bag when you find the right tassels to pull, of course. So for this project, I am using the Retwist Cheney Cotton Cake and it's a recycled yarn. It's made of cotton and polyester. The crochet hook is a two to a four millimeter. So we are using a three and a half. And I am playing with the colours. So I'm really enjoying this project. I hope you will too. And yeah, let's get started. So what do you need for this project? I'm using the Retwist Cheney Cotton Cake by James C. Brett. It comes in all kinds of lovely colours. So do go and have a look. It is prescribed for a two to four millimeter hook. So I am using my three and a half. This will ensure I have a nice tight fabric and my bag will actually stand up. You will also need scissors. And here I have a darning needle with a really big eye and this will actually take the yarn. So this is really handy for sewing in the ends of chainy yarn. And then I have just before I started um, taken out from the middle of my cake because that's where we are going to get started. Here I have taken out about three meters of colored yarn. This yarn I'm going to keep aside and I will use that to decorate the tassels at the end of our project. So we are going to get started by doing a magic circle. So lay the yarn into your hand like this. Hold on to it, wind it round your two fingers in a cross like this. Then take your hook, go under this strand here, pick up that strand there, bring it through, twist and go back to that same back strand that you picked up and do a chain. Now you can take your fingers out. And we're going to do a second chain because this is for the height of our half double crochets. And now we are going to do nine half double crochets into our circle over the bit where we have those two strands of yarn. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and you pull through the three loops on your hook because that is what you do for a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert, pull up yarn over and pull through the three loops. So we are going to do nine of those and I have already done three now. Four, five, six, seven, eight and nine let's just count one two three four five six seven eight and this is the ninth v there so we have nine but we need ten and this chain here is going to count as our tenth one so we're going to close up our circle by pulling our end there we go, and shaping it a little bit, pulling it more. There we are. So now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Under the ninth V here, you're going to insert your hook and you bring through your yarn and you are going to sort of pull everything closed, everything tied, do your slip stitch and this will then now give you your tenth V. Now we're going to chain two, one and two. And this chain two is going to act as our last half double crochet of the round. So we're going to disregard it for now. 
and in round two we are going to place two half double crochets in each V around our circle. So yarn over and insert into the first V and do your half double crochet and do a second one into the same location. Then we go over to the next V and we also do two half double crochets. So we are going to do six rounds in our base and we need to increase a different ratio in each round. So the first round we just do our 10 stitches. In the second round we double our stitches. So then we will have 20 Vs. In the third round we are going to do a different ratio of increase but that will give us 30 stitches then the fourth round will have 40 stitches the fifth round will have 50 stitches and the sixth round will have 60 stitches and that is what we need to achieve after our six rounds of increases so i will meet you each time at the beginning of my round to tell you what the increase is going to be so now we are at the end of our second round. We've come to the place here where that chain is coming out of. Like I said, this chain counts as the last stitch of the round. So we need to add one half double crochet into that stitch. This is then the second one. And we're going to create its top by going under the next V there and creating a slip stitch. There we go. And that now has made the top of our half double crochet. So now we have 20 Vs going around the outside of my work here. So each round you start the same. Chain two, disregard. And now the increase for round three is we count to three. The first stitch you do in the first stitch so one half double crochet in the first stitch and then in the second stitch we do the second one and the third stitch goes in with the second one so the stitch when you count the number of the round goes in with the previous stitch so one two three okay so this is how you're going to continue one in the first stitch two in the next stitch. I will see you at the end of the round. Finished my round by putting that next half double crochet into that stitch with the chain coming out of, going under the next V, closing the round with a slip stitch. Chain two and this time we are on round four. So our increase is going to be one half double crochet in the first stitch one half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the next stitch. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I will see you at the end of the round. Just closing my round, chain two, and this time we are on round five, one, two, three, four, five. So our count is going to be two, five. So we count one, two, three, four, and five goes in with number four. There we go. So this is the repeat that we're going to do. One, 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 two. And here we place the increase. I will see you at the end of the round. Just finishing that fifth round. Now starting my sixth one chain two this time our increase is going to be one stitch 
one stitch in the next one, one stitch in the next one. So that's one, two, three, four stitches, of course, disregarding the chain. And then stitch five and six are going to be together in a stitch. So each time you count to six and when you get to stitch six, just put it in the stitch that you've just used for stitch five. One, two, three, four, five and six in there as well. I will see you at the end of the round. So I am at the end of my round going under that V and I do my slip stitch and look my yarn is just changing. So this is the base of your bag and this will be the outside of your bag. So this will be the inside. So now working with the outside towards you, you are going to chain two and we are going to do half double crochets all around our edge of our work. No more increases, but we are going to place our half double crochets into the back loops and we are also picking up the third loops. So let me just show you. So these are the V's. This is the front loop. This is the back loop. So we'll be picking up the back loop. And then when you tilt it further towards you, you will see there is a strand there. This is what they call the third loop. And we are also picking that one up. Now, let me try and get out of it. Yeah. Now, when you normally pick up your stitch, you go sort of almost horizontal. This time you're going to go down. Look, and you'll pick up both the strands that you need to be picking up. So let me show you while I'm doing some stitches. So once again, we are going to disregard this chain here. It's going to be the last stitch of our round. So you yarn over, you go into the back loop of this stitch and you pick up the third loop as well. You pull up a loop and we do a half double crochet. Same thing, sort of at a lower angle and you will find you will be picking up those two strands that you need to be picking up, look. But make sure you check for each, oops, make sure you check for each stitch. Don't just blindly trust it um, because if you don't pick up that third loop and let me show you, then, oh yeah, I picked it up, of course. There we go. So if you don't pick it up, then your, look, your stitch that it goes into will stretch and it won't give you such a nice finish. So here, this is not going to stretch. It's not going to create any holes so nothing can escape from your bag. Of course, here, not much can get through, but it just doesn't look so nice. So if I undo this, go back into it, Find that third loop and do the same. You will see there is no hole. And that is why we do this. So one stitch in every back loop and third loop. And I will see you where we need to sort this out. So I'm just closing my round here with a slip stitch. There we go. And now we're going to do a chain two. This will count as the last double crochet of the round. So we're just going to start our repeat and we'll sort that one out later. So we are going to skip one. Then into the next one, we are going to place two double crochets. So here on the channel, we call a cluster of two double crochets a dainty cluster so these are dainty clusters that we are going to be doing so skip one two double crochets in the next stitch so i will meet you when you are here 
So I've made it to the end of my round. Here is the location for my last cluster. There's already a chain coming out, so I'm just going to add a double crochet to that. Then I'm going to skip the chain two, go under the next V there, and I'm going to do a slip stitch, and this has now created my last cluster. So now I'm in a location which isn't ideal, but I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to do a chain two and a double crochet here in that first location for a cluster. And that way we have just made use of what we have and we don't need to do any slip stitches, but it's just a good way to get started for our next round. So now for the next round, we are going to be placing our clusters in between the clusters that we have just created. So two double crochets in between the clusters of the previous round. And this is what you will also do for a third round. So here you will skip the first two chains, do your slip stitch there, do your first cluster here, and off you go doing another round. So I will see you when you have three rounds of dainty clusters. Now, if you wanted to, you could keep on doing dainty clusters. So you would be doing 14 rounds of dainty clusters. This will give you a height that's tall enough for your bag. However, if you want to do all the other interesting stitches, of course, come back later in the tutorial and you will see me explain them. So I have just finished my third round of dainty clusters. I'm now going to close my round we are going to do a round of double crochets. So we're going to get started with two chains. These will act as our last double crochet of the round. So looking in the direction where we are going to be working, we are going to be placing a double crochet in each stitch of the round. So picking up both the strands, we are going to create a double crochet in each stitch. There we go. So I will meet you here. So I'm going to skip these two chains here. These are going to act as my last double crochet located in this last stitch here. Skipping them, going under this V here to do my slip stitch to close the round. Now I'm going to do a single crochet. So into that same stitch, you go into it and you do a single crochet. As you have seen, that's brought my yarn back up, but that's perfectly fine because this is just what we need. We need a single crochet in there. Then we are going to skip two stitches. Into the third one, we are going to be working seven double crochets. So you do seven double crochets into that third stitch there. Now we are going to be creating too many stitches. So we have 60 stitches in our round, but now we are going to be creating more stitches. So in a moment, when we have done three rounds of shells, we will make a row of double crochets and we'll make up the correct number of stitches again so don't worry about having too many now or about it coming out a little bit because it will do it will sort itself out later on so now after doing our seven double crochets we are going to skip two and place a single crochet in the third there we go same thing again skip two seven double crochets in the third stitch and then after you have done those seven double crochets, we will be doing another skip two and a single crochet in the third. So this is the repeat that you will be doing for the rest of the row. One, two, three, four, five. And six and seven. And you will be making... 10 shells. One, two, there we go. 
so I will see you when you have 10 shells and when you are here. So after the uh, shell bar one, so this one, I just skipped two, did my single crochet, then skipped two and did my shell in the third stitch. And then whatever you have left here, one, two, it doesn't look like two, but it is two. So those are the two that you need to skip. And then, of course, here we have that single crochet. So here you're just going to go into the single crochet and you do a slip stitch and that's closed around. OK, so now we are going to find out which here is the middle double crochet. So you count one, two, three. And this one here is the middle double crochet. So that's the tallest one as well. So we're going to work our way there with slip stitches. So into, do I go into here? Yeah, one two just see however many you need to do three and then yeah the fourth one that will give me yeah that's where i need to be okay now we are going to be placing our single crochets on top of the shells here and we're going to be placing our shells into the single crochets from the row below so just go in there we go, and we do a single crochet. There we go. Now we are going to go into that single crochet below there in the valley, and we are going to start doing our seven double crochets. Three, four, five and six. Oh my goodness am I going to be able to squeeze in another one one two three four five six yeah another one in there it will work I'm sure there we go so seven double crochets in there then we skip one two three stitches and we do our single crochet on that middle double crochet you know the tallest one just so we can adhere it and this way we have a nicely woven tight fabric without a minimum of holes so this is how you will continue so get into that stitch there it's a little bit easier if you go into this hole here and that's perfectly fine to do that so let's see if we can do the seven double crochets into there Three, four, five, six, and seven. There we go. And yeah, skip one, two, three, the middle one here for a single crochet. There we go. I will see you at the end of the row here just done my last shell here now i'm going to my first single crochet that i did in the beginning of the round and i do my slip stitch in there there we go so that's closed my round and we have now done two rounds of 10 shells so i'm going to do another round of shells so yeah we are going to do the same little four slip stitches to take us to that middle double crochet then in there you go back in this will undo sort of the slip stitch but that doesn't matter we need a single crochet in there there we go and now the same thing so find the location here of that sort of bigger hole um, that will make it easier for you to put those seven double crochets in there. And then, of course, the single crochet on top of the middle double crochet of the next shell. I will see you at the end of the round. Just closing the round number 14 and I'm ready for round 15. And as you can see, we are ending in a wavy edge, so we need to sort that out. 
Not only that, we also have to sort out the fact that we've got too many stitches now because of course our shells take up more stitches than what we had originally. So let me just show you what we are going to do. So in the lower places, we are going to place higher stitches. In the higher places, we're going to place shorter stitches so we're going to get started with a chain two which will count as our double crochet then we are going to do a double crochet in the next stitch because we are still in the area where we are needing high stitches then this stitch here we are going to skip that one in the next three stitches there so after skipping this one we are going to place a half double crochet in those so yarn over and you make a half double crochet in the next three stitches after you have skipped the first one there and then we are going to here skip this one as well so we are skipping off the shell we are skipping the second and the sixth double crochet then you go and look in the valley and you have one, two, three stitches. This is where we're going to place three double crochets. So in a way it's quite simple. In the valley we place three double crochets, then we skip a stitch, then we place three half double crochets on top of the shell so the higher places and then we skip a stitch and that is your repeat see look and it's ending up being straight so I will see you when you reach here because of course here we did not start with our three double crochets in our valley. We need to add one there, but it will work out logically when you get there. So I will see you at the end of the round. So I've just made it to the end of the round here. As you can see, yes, we've only got two double crochets here in the valley. So when I skip one, I have this stitch left to place my double crochet in. And now we skip the two chains, go under that next V and we do a slip stitch. There we go. So now you should be back to your 60 count stitches and your top here is nice and straight again. So now we're going to do three rows of dainty clusters. So to get started, we are going to chain two. This will be the last double crochet of our round. So let's just forget about that for now. We are going to be looking at the first stitch here, which we are going to skip. Then the next stitch in there, we are going to place two double crochets. There we go. And then you skip one and you do two double crochets in the next stitch. Skip one, two double crochets in the next stitch. And you continue like this all along your round and I will meet you at the end of it. Made it to the end of my row. Here is that chain two. So I'm going to add another double crochet into that same stitch where that chain two was coming out of. And then I do a slip stitch just past the chain two. And now really you are going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to chain two, place my first double crochet in there and consider this my first dainty cluster and then I'm going to do the whole round and I'm going to do another round as well so I will see you when you have done two more rounds of dainty clusters so just at the end of round 18 I've just done my slip stitch and closed my round 
So now for round 19, we are going to be doing a round of double crochets. So we're going to chain two, and this will count as a double crochet coming out of this stitch here. So from here on on, we will be placing a double crochet in each V along our round. So let me do that and I will see you when you have completed your round. So I'm just closing round 19 with my slip stitch here. There we go. And now for round 20, we are going to do kisses. So we're going to chain two. Then we're going to skip a stitch. Into the next stitch, you're going to do a double crochet. And then to create the kiss, you're going to go back to that skipped stitch and you do your double crochet in there. This requires a little bit of a bigger movement, but it will be okay. So skip one stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. Then you do a double crochet in the stitch that you just skipped. There we go. And this is how you are going to continue all along your round. I will see you when you get here. So when you get to the end of your round, you will notice that you have indeed got two stitches left with one chain coming out, but it's not easy to make this into a kiss. So what we're going to do is put one double crochet into that last stitch and then do your slip stitch on top of the chain or into that first V that you see just past the chain. This has created just two double crochets like this, which is fine. Now we're going to do another round of double crochets. So chain two. And then you place a double crochet on top of every stitch in the previous round. I will see you at the end of the round. So I've just made it to the end of my round. Now I'm closing it up. There we go. So now we are going to make boxes. So we're going to get started by chaining three. This will count as our double crochet and a chain one that we have to do. Now here we are skipping the first stitch. Then we do a double crochet in the next stitch. And this will create a box. There we go. So we are going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And this is how you will continue all along your round. I will see you when you have completed it. So when you've come to the end of your round and you have just the one stitch left here, you're going to chain one, skip that one, and then you skip the two chains of your first chain that you did. You go under the third V. And to be honest, I can never get under the thing properly. Let's try. <laughs> but very often I just go into it whichever way I can. Okay. See, and now it's hard to get through, but we're doing it under the right strand. So sometimes I just go in whichever way I can. We have now made 30 boxes. So now, once again, we are going to do a round of shells because I want a nice pretty edge at the end of my bag. So we're going to go into the box here and we do a single crochet. Then... We are going to skip a box and then in the next box we are going to do our seven double crochets. So instead of counting or doing whatever we need to do to get to a certain location, we are going to be using the boxes now. So that's three, four, five, six and seven double crochets in there. 
skip a box and a single crochet in the next box. So when you've done three shells, you have repeated the little sequence three times. So you do your seven double crochets, so you skip a box and then it says one single crochet in the next box. So we're going to do that. And then we are going to start the repeat again. So one single crochet in the next box. And then we do another three shells. So skip a box and we do our seven double crochets. I will see you when you get to the end of your fourth shell. So here I've done my fourth shell since I did my double single crochets here. One, two, three, four. So now here as well, I have a location to do a double single crochet. See, so we have a location on each side of our bag to attach our handle on. Now, I know we've got four shells on one side and three on the other, but that was just the way it worked out with our count. Nobody is going to notice that and it won't affect how our bag operates. So now we are going to chain the length of the handle that you want. And in the pattern, I have set 140. It could be less, it could be more, depending on how long you want this. So 140 for when you want to wear it crossbody. Uh, for this version here, I did not do 140 chains. I did uh, 65, so I have a shorter handle. For the grey version here, I did the long handle, so I thought I would change it up a bit. So wanting to, you know, not do the same twice. So here I have my chain, so making sure it is not twisted. You're going to go to the other side of your bag where you have those two single crochets. And you're going to go yeah, like this and you go into them doing a slip stitch. There we go. Then you slip stitch into the next one, into the next single crochet. So it brings you a little bit higher up. And then taking your chain like this, so with the Vs towards you and with your yarn here and working into the chain you are going to be placing double crochets onto the chain all the way back and this way you have made your handle integrated into your drawstring bag so we have not yet had to cut off our yarn which we will do now after we have done our handle because our basic bag will be finished and we just need to make the drawstring and the tassels. So there we go. I will see you when you have finished your handle. So I have made it all the way back on my chain and making sure it was not twisted when I arrive on the other side, you find that second single crochet that we have there and you are going to do a slip stitch into there. There we go. And that is then the end of our bag and we can cut off the yarn now. Now, you might think that this is going to stretch. It's not going to stretch all that much because we have built it on a chain and chains generally don't stretch too much. So I am pulling here, but it's not getting any longer. So that's good. Uh, it will serve as well to use as a strap or as a handle. So I'm going to cut off my yarn. And of course, you're going to have to sew in the end. So let me show you how to do that because I discovered that if you use one of these ones with the huge eye in it, it works really well. So this darning needle will actually take the yarn quite easily. There we go. And then we are going to start sewing it in, but on the inside of our work so nobody can see, you know, the little strand running along. And what I do 
is I just pick up strands and I try to make sure that I go sort of around, loop the loop around the strand and then move on to another strand and there and then here like so doing loop the loops just weaving my way into the fabric of the bag there we go and you do that as long as you can or as long as you fancy or until your end is finished so i'm just going to leave that for now but i'm going to show you what else we are going to do so the bag is now finished we have this left so i have some of this gray left i have dark gray in here and i have pink and gray in there so i want to do my tassels in this dark gray and i'm going to do my drawstrings in the pink because the drawstrings are going to lie into here and that will give us a nice contrast so let me first of all show you how to make the drawstrings so let me try oh this is the beginning here yeah let me try and find the end so i've made my slip knot and i'm just going to chain Now you have to make two chains which are the same length and how long you want them also depends on you but you want them the length of your width of your bag times two because of course it goes around the bag and a little bit more. So I have made a chain of about 80 chains this is about 55 centimeters long or 22 inches. I think I did the one for the grey bag a little bit longer but it also depends on your preference um, so of course then once you've done one you are going to cut this one off don't pull that through yet because you still need that and you're going to make a second one because we're going to do two drawstrings to pull the bag closed now from here on your cake is going to disintegrate so i suggest you wind up the cake and i am going to do it in color so now i have here the leftovers of my cake i have split them up into colors and i wound them into mini cakes so they are easy for me to use i also have the little bit of yarn that we took off the cake before we started so that is a good accent color that i can use now and i have here my drawstrings so one and two one of course has still got the loop on it and we are going to place the other end on our darning needle so thread it into the eye of the darning needle and then take your bag and starting from underneath where you have your handle attached you're going to go in out in out and then you pull it through making sure of course you don't pull it all through so hold on to it here so you go and you are going to make your way all the way round your bag It's so easy to do that with this darning needle. There we go. And now we are here and we come out of this one here. So now, of course, we need to close this up. But in closing up, we are also going to be attaching the tassels. So we're going to just leave it out for now. And we're going to do the second drawstring. So once again, you take the end of your drawstring, you put it on your needle. And this time, because we want to make sure we are in the right place, we are going to have to go around and over. Yeah, there we go. 
So with this drawstring, you do the opposite. So you pull it through. But of course, here you're going to have to do it this way. So only halfway here, because we need this drawstring to finish on the other side. But I just find it easiest and most straightforward if I can see where I am by starting on the other side there halfway. There we go. Voila. And here we come out. See, look, we come out of this one here. And so here is where we are going to end with our other side. And of course, if you put this on your needle, that's going to come apart when you pull it. So we are just going to do this old fashioned way and do it with our fingers. You can, of course, start on the other side where it's supposed to end but this way I know I'm sure in what I'm doing and where everything needs to end up and it works just as well with your fingers look just pull this loop a little bit bigger so my stitches do not come undone And then here you will have to make sure you come out on this side of this post. There we go. Right. So now if I pull this and I pull this, the bag closes. Yes. And if it's closed, I have chain left. So it just lies on the table here and that's fine. It doesn't have to be longer than that. Great. OK, so that works. Let's open it up again. And yeah, I like the fact that it's contrasting so you can see what's happening. So that's that. So now let's have a look at making the tassels. So I would like to make the tassels in this and then wrap around my contrasting yarn. Or I could make tassels in this and then wrap around that. Possibilities are endless. <laughs> so... I'm going to use my phone case um, because my usual box that I use, let me show you the um, chocolates box. I think it's too big. I want smaller tassels. So let's see if we can find the middle here because I don't want it to start unraveling from the outside. And you can decide really how many times you want it to you know wrap around I haven't counted so I want nice fat tassels so there we go that's fine that will do okay so now we have to make sure that we are going to be closing up these here. So get your hook out. Do a slip stitch into that very first chain here. Now, of course, you, you're not going to be able to tell whether or not it's going to be twisted, but that doesn't really matter. So we're going to do a slip stitch. So we close our chain. You pull it through and these strands here are the ones that we are going to use to hold our tassel together. So pull through one strand and then you have another one here like so. Then we take this off. Get ready to knot. So I pull it th through twice. There we go. Get, do a light knot and then you take it off. Yep. Your whatever you're using for that, your phone maybe. <laughs> and then just pull it closed. There we go. Then, yeah, making sure your 
yarn does not close up here but you can go around again this is a little bit fiddly there we go see I've put that round again and I'm going to do that double knot again one and another time there we go and you pull it closed really really tightly now what you could do is take these ends and sew them in to the chain so the color stays within the color okay but if you don't mind too much you can just cut them off and let them disappear into your tassel but of course then you will have a different color yarn in your tassel but this way look you've got your drawstring with your tassel already attached so I'm just going to leave them out like this. I will sew them in later with my uh, darning needle, as you have seen me do before. And now I'm going to use my contrasting yarn and I'm going to place it onto there. Get everything out of the way here, because this is a little bit, again, fiddly, but worth it, worth it. So hold on to the end like so. And you're going to start wrapping it around very carefully nicely next to each other like so so you create a nice little band around your tassel and then this end here I just try and make it disappear into that little band and if I can't, then I take the um, darning needle and I try and sort of bring it into my tassel, but as short as possible. So, yeah, I'm wrapping over it here in the other direction. See? There we go. See, so I can take that into the tassel if I wanted to. There we go. And I am really pulling here making sure I get a nice little band of a pop of colour. So now I've ended at the top here, which is important. So you're now going to cut off this. I put my needle into my tassel like so, and then I yeah, put it on the needle, push my needle through, where is it? Where is it? And I just pull it through. There you go. And you could do that with this one as well. But of course, it's lower down. So you might want to try and make sure that it's more up. But for now, do you know what? I took it along. So I'm thinking if I just push it into there, I think that should work. Push that through there. Yep. Yeah. And I pull it through bit of force needed see look and it's gone there we go okay yes you have got it in here so if you don't want the other color cut them off a little bit not completely because otherwise they might come undone but there we go so now the fun part here as well haha <laughs> cutting open the tassel yay <laughs> So cut it open as best you can. I usually use bigger scissors for this, so you might want to use your fabric scissors. So make sure you've opened up all your... Let's have a look. Now it's getting messy. <laughs> make sure you open up all your loops and then... Give it a haircut. <laughs> Make sure that they're all a nice length, that they're the same length. See? That's better. Not perfect because I'll have to get my big scissors out. So there we go. So, yeah, look at that lovely little tassel. So we have a bit of our starting yarn around the last part of our drawstring bag. And I think that's just a really nice touch there. So... Of course, now you're going to have to do the same thing on this side and make another tassel. So for opening my bag, I have added another tassel on a strand 
around this post here. So in between where my two drawstrings are coming out and I've done this on each side and when I want to open my bag after it's been closed of course you pull these drawstrings and it will open your bag. So to close the bag you pull these two tassels so you could make these the same colour and then to open your bag you make smaller tassels you make them a different colour and you use those to open your bag with. Well, I hope you have enjoyed making this project. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.